On Airline Tonight, Katrina lets her hair down. It's still hair. <laughs> You can't even see my bum. <laughs> For an aircraft to Jane take off. Bolton lays the law down. An aircraft door has to be closed at least 10 minutes before departure to be taxiing down the runway to take off on time. But you... It's an aircraft, not a bus, okay. you see. And one terrified EasyJet worker takes the hard way down. Oh, my God. I'm not going to go any faster than we I don't feel I can hang on. Come on! Go on, Mum! Jump! Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away If you can use some exotic booze There's a bar in far Bombay Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away Today, the chairman of EasyJet is at Luton to check on the running of the company. Unfortunately, there are delays due to bad weather, so Stelius decides to give a helping hand. When it's weather, usually people understand it's not our fault, but uh, still there is a huge logistical exercise to try and reallocate all these thousands of people that have been delayed today, but we'll get there eventually. However, being at ground level puts Stelios right in the firing line. First up, a woman with an overweight bag full of breakfast cereal. I bring this bag with me everywhere, yeah? Mm. I'll show you what's in my bag. I'm on a business trip, so I'll do it. I want to just show you, you really what's in my bag. You don't have to do that. I'm, okay. I'm sure it's all right. It weighs 6.2 kilos. Now, the standard allowance is 5 kilos, she says. The lady at the luggage counter was not going to let me carry it, on, carry it on with me on my flight. And I said, this is ridiculous. If I were to go and buy three bottles of whiskey, which is quite often what I do or could do. This happened now? Where are you going? It's OK. She, so she, she called it. I, I refused. First of all, I also weigh less than 50 kilos. You know, it's not a question of weight. Two yeah. kilos to my bag should not I, make I agree with make... you. They shouldn't have made an issue. And with she made me her. yell, and uh, I was really about, about to cry. And I just wanted So you're going to, to Amsterdam now, are you? Yeah, I'm going to take it with me. But I just want to make the point that if my kilo is one, one, well, if my bag is some, two kilos overweight... Some of the staff are training now, so that they take the rules literally sometimes. Hi. Hi. Katrina has taken some time off from her hectic work schedule to make space for a very special appointment. She's decided to get hair extensions, and her husband Julian has come along to offer his support. I've lost my hair twice now through cancer, and each time my hair was at a, you know, a long length. I believe my confidence is building back up again now. I just feel I'm at a stage where, you know, I just want to... I would like to click my fingers and be the Katrina I was two years ago. I know it's not going to happen, but I feel these extensions may be, you know, a way nearer to that point. I think she looks great short or long, to be honest. Even with no hair, she looked great. I always called her a little gremlin, and <laughs> she always will be. <laughs> But no, I don't, I don't mind. It'd be good. It'd be nice to see the end result. But they both have a long day ahead of them. 500 separate strands of hair will be glued onto Katrina's own hair, a painstaking process that takes over six hours. Wow. First one's in. <laughs> Jerry! <laughs> Back at Luton, another difficult procedure is taking place. Stephen Elwood is trying to get all the passengers on the Belfast Sunny, flight please. in time. Thank you very much. May I have your attention, please? Further urgent boarding call for the 18 remaining passengers wishing to travel to Belfast with EasyJet this morning. You are advised to clear through all departure channels and board immediately through gate number 11. You are advised that your flight is now boarded and you are delaying its departure. Oh, I'm so mean. I've got about, say, Oh, five, ten minutes or so to get them here, but that's, well, that's ten minutes to get them down to the bottom of the runway and get them to take off. Good morning. If they don't arrive this morning, it's quite simple. Just tell the dispatcher the bag tag numbers, loaders will go and get the bags, and they'll be offloaded. It's also slow progress at the hairdressers, but Katrina's very pleased with the results so far. I feel confident already. I just love long hair on, on me. I don't care if it's not my own. As soon as Rob put the first strand in my hair, to me that was my hair. I didn't believe it's anyone else's. And Katrina has another reason to be cheerful. Two weeks ago, I went for um, a scan. 
um, to see if my cancer's returned, just a normal routine scan. I must admit, I was very nervous about this, you know, quite worried because it's the first scan I've had where I've had to wait six months. Usually I was having them every three months. Um, it's my first one I had like after six months, but everything's all right, so like, I'm really like, obviously happy. Meanwhile, back at the Belfast boarding gate, Stephen feels like tearing his hair out. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. You're going to Belfast? Come on then, quick. You've got about one minute. You're lucky because they just started to change their mind. Right, walk straight over the path, go in between the white and red bollards to stand number nine, please. Don't dawdle. The last two are on the way now. I've, I've made them run down the path, so should be with you any second now. I can't see him here. They're lucky because we just about to chuck them off. Oh, well, I told them that they had to hurry up. All right, then. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye. Passing correct, 87. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, it's tight as that. And they don't have no mercy. If they want to chuck them off, they'll chuck them off. They just dawdle around and they just think that the planes will wait. Go ahead. Stephen, I'm bringing these two. I'm bringing these two passengers back. She's not accepting them. All right, we've got two offloads. Thank you, Aaron. That means that they won't be too happy now because um, my colleagues there's just um, said that the captain said no because they took too long. So um, we're going to have to get them transferred onto the later Belfast flight. To be quite honest, I think it's quite funny. <laughs> you know, it'll teach people not, not to just dawdle around. <laughs> Stelios's presence at Luton has been no coincidence. Today is the first day of a new productivity drive. Uh, this is a very important initiative for, for the company. In a nutshell, it is essentially about getting the most out of our aircraft. We have one of he wants his staff to increase efficiency by reducing the turnaround time of his planes. If they can bring down the time between landing and taking off again to just 25 minutes, it will save £6 million a year. At the sharp end are people like James McBride, one of 50 EasyJet pilots at the airline's second biggest base, Liverpool Airport. Today he's flying to Luton and then on to Nice. But it's the first day of a new timetable, and hitting those 25-minute turnarounds won't be easy. Stelios is giving away free watches this year, which is nice. But it only goes up to 25 minutes, if you note, OK? Which is the time that's supposed to take us to do a turnaround. Isolation valve. Auto. Start levers. Idle detent. Surround equipment. Clear. After that checklist is complete. Go for taxi. We've done well. Uh, 25 minutes at the moment that turnaround's taken us. The aircraft is on stand at 38 and we started taxiing, well, started engines at 03, so that's good news. But the real challenge will be when he arrives at Luton, where it's far more hectic and the ground staff more thinly stretched. Oh, my God! <laughs> at the salon, okay. it's finally time for Katrina to see the results. <laughs> but I think the scruff is more on Julia. site. How can I go in? Uh, wow. Do I just play around with it? It's about to stop looking in there. <laughs> I'll just do hair. <laughs> you can't even see my bum. <laughs> the result is just what Katrina wished for. I love the length and everything, you know. Okay. But she'll have to wear it tied up for work. It's really simple, just put it in like that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's going to be so short. Look at it. <laughs> Back at Luton, several of the planes are already behind schedule. It's up to top dispatcher Russell to ensure that things run smoothly when the planes arrive. All right, yeah, we're going to uh, aim for a 25-minute turnaround. Uh, so obviously we've got a slot, so it all depends on whether the crew are willing to, be, to go for it. So if they are, we'll be OK. Have you got a few figures? So the pilot for the Luton to Glasgow flight is Captain Paul Barnes. So far, everything's going like clockwork. Yeah, okay. right, brilliant. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, James McBride has made good time from Liverpool and is coming in to land at Luton. OK, manual braking. Break this up. And half normal reverse, OK? Yeah, timings-wise now, um, we're about four minutes behind schedule and uh, due out of here at five past. 
Captain McBride's plane needs to load up 12,000 litres of fuel, 3,000 kilos of baggage, and food and drink for 120 passengers, all in just under 25 minutes. Yeah, if possible. Dispatcher Russell is under pressure too. He's trying to get the Glasgow flight on its way, but Captain Barnes has just discovered a technical fault. Suddenly, it's not looking good for a quick turnaround. Problem with the autopilot. We're going to board now, and they're going to repair it as we're boarding. I've got to go and get the passengers now. We've got another uh, 13 minutes, according to Stanley Osakin. But on the Nice stand, it looks as though James McBride's flight will be first onto the runway. Got five minutes to go, I just started boarding. Do you want to lift back up? Russell's up against it. The Glasgow bound passengers are boarding, but the turnaround hits another snag. Computers have gone down, and they can't tell me how many passengers and what the weights are and everything else. So um, we're running well behind them. Sorry about that, it's uh, computers playing up, so. We've lost the plot at the moment. We've got two and a half minutes left, so. We've cracked it. Done it in 25 minutes this morning. Captain McBride has been cleared for takeoff and is on his way to sunny Nice. We have to do hand signals as Meanwhile, well. Russell's plane has suffered yet headset. one more technical problem. So I'd imagine the captain's had a warning light to say the uh, door's not shut properly. Seems to be okay now. The Glasgow flight eventually gets going. 20 minutes late. It's not been Russell's lucky day. We had a technical problem when we wanted to board the passengers. And because we just started up, the uh, computer system, which we use for the load sheets, uh, decided not to work at this particular time, the busiest time of the day. So. Behind the scenes, there are hundreds of people involved in making the airline run smoothly. Every day, around 20,000 seats are booked, and 250 staff take telephone reservations. Thank you. Bye-bye. Karen Murphy helps schedule the staff rotors. Today, she's unusually nervous. On Sunday, Karen and brother Brian will be climbing down a 180-foot building to raise money for charity. Karen is terrified of heights. I'm going to be doing um, an abseil down Clarence House in Northampton for cancer relief, for the Macmillan Cancer Relief Fund. My brother is actually seeing a girl who is suffering from breast cancer at the moment. Um, she was diagnosed about eight months ago, and um, she's been fighting it ever since. Karen is using her lunch hour to raise as much sponsor money yeah. as possible. Yes, I'm quite happy to contribute. I, I lost a wife through cancer. With a total of well over a thousand pounds promised, all Karen has to worry about now is the height. At Luton, Katrina is also nervous, but for different reasons. This is my first day of showing off my new hair. I have to admit, it's like being back at school with new shoes. You're really nervous about going in for your first day. <laughs> Ooh, Jerry Hallowell might eat my hair. <laughs> Very nice. It's nearly enough the same colour as your roots, actually. It's not much different. <laughs> it's lovely. Can you do me a favour? Yes, yeah, certainly. Turn around. Very nice. <laughs> Katrina's boss has summoned her to see the new hairstyle. Everyone seems to like it so far, which I'm really pleased with that, because it doesn't be the talk of EasyJet, do I? Where they're all mulling me down or something. <laughs> Meanwhile, Stephen is just starting his last ever shift for EasyJet. For the, for the last year now, I've, I've been running around like a whippet, you know, sorting people's problems out, sorting bags out, checking people in, boarding flights, and now it's all just about to come to an end. Within space of an hour and a half, that'll be it all. But I've enjoyed it. I've hated it as well, but I've enjoyed it. Stephen is off to a different company to train as cabin crew. It feels really weird because I never thought I would actually see myself leaving, and this is my last check in. <laughs> but his last day isn't quite as quiet as he would have hoped for. Wan Zhou should be on her way to Geneva by now. But the thing is, I have the reservation. How could you close the flight? Because 
EasyJet are not prepared to wait for you. They get charged three. But I'm three... not late. I mean, like, yes, you are I late. I got here at 1.05. And then we well, now The check-in closes at 1.05. You have to be here before that, sorry. The thing is, the bus, the shuttle bus, they have no, some it, trouble that, with that's, the lady. That's the problem with but an it's airport. Not, it's, it is with it's the not airport. With Easy... It's the airport's responsibility that. It's not EasyJet. It's EasyJet get fined £300 a minute. For, for, for if a plane gets delayed, so they won't hold a plane for you I'm while not, you come while you come to I'm the check-in. We'll gladly transfer you on to the next one. She'll, she'll run over there now and ask them to put me on the flight, but because she just she's not going to have it that she can't get on the flight. Katrina's back from seeing the boss, whose reaction to her hair was not what she'd expected. I've just been told today my hair's too long for work because it's below, below the bra strap. So I thought, right, well, tomorrow I'm going to come in my ponytail hanging up from here because it'd be above the bra strap then. But apparently, I think it's, is it six... Your six hair can't be six ponytail. inches from this ponytail here. So what, six inches? No, I only found out today when they called me in the office. I thought I've been really told off. It's because my hair's too long. You'll have to chop it. What's happening with that? The thing is, this weekend I'm going back to get more extensions put in, so... The bad news is, from now on, she must wear her hair in a bun. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I can't argue with their rules. If they say my hair's too long in a ponytail, it's too long, but... I've had it in the bun a few times for work, and I've always realised, I come over and I'm like, wow, I've got a massive headache. So I, I, I think it's from my, from my buns, personally. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Karen Murphy also has a headache, but of a different kind. It's abseil day and the crowds are gathering. Will she be able to overcome her fear of heights? I am really, really surprised, Jay. I never thought it would be that high, definitely not. No, it's just... I'm feeling very nervous. <laughs> and I'm wondering how the hell I'm going to get over that ledge. Oh, my God. <laughs> about it. What's the least that's going to happen? You're going to scar your face. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, then. It's the big moment. Oh, my God. I knew looking up was easier than being up here. Oh, God, my stomach's in a knot. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be this high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Back at Luton, Stephen is still trying to sort out the problem with the troublesome passenger. Jane Bolton has been called over to explain why Wanzo can't board her flight. Flight is at 1.25. But with all due respect, if for an aircraft to take off on time, an aircraft door has to be closed at least 10 minutes before departure to be taxiing down the runway to take off on time. It's an aircraft, not a bus, you see. We have to close the check-in. 20 minutes before a flight is, is not long. Everybody else is 45 minutes. Airlines that you have a quick turnover, you always quick turnaround, which is 20 minutes, which is why we have to close the check in on time. But then, when there's a matter of a minute, I literally did clear 105. He was the gentleman I've was with jumped. me. I, I did ask if we could have any more passengers, and then um, the people who were closer to the captain actually said no. And once they say no, there's, there's nothing else we can do. I'm sorry. Subdued and defeated. Yuanzo has no choice but to wait five hours for the next flight to Geneva. Do you know? I have to say, I don't know what's wrong with me today, but I'm not in a very good mood today, but it really does bother me when people don't turn up for the bloody flights on time. Mm, and because then the bus was late. Yeah, well, because the train was late. People, like, I would never Why don't they give themselves enough like, time? Yeah, set off an hour, an extra hour. Well, I don't know what you're... When I go on holiday, I'm here about three hours before my flight's due to go. Not only that... Oh, Jesus. Karen, on the other hand, would love to have a five-hour delay. The moment has finally arrived for her to go over the top. Yeah. OK, climb over the railings. Hang on. Jeez. Nice and easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Oh, God. I feel really sick now. It's all right. Take the black rope in your right hand now. Hang on. Come on, Karen. Come on, I've got you in this white right rope. You can't go anywhere. I will not let you. Come on, Karen. Go on, Mom! Oh, I'm, I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. You're not. Step down on his part now. Okay. Keep going back more. Okay. 
I don't think she wants to get over the edge. I think she's froze there. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not gonna go any faster than we I don't feel I can hang on. Come on! Go on, Mum! Jump! Walk down, that's it, go. Walk. Walk. Walk back, that's it, go on. Go on, Karen. Walk back, go on. Come on. Oh, wait for me, Bri. Come on, I'm beating you. Hang on. Go on, Brian. Go on, Mum. Go on, Karen. I'm trying. Come on. Ah. I've never swayed so much. Sorry, Sorry about that. Finally, Karen touches down, and it's all been worthwhile. <laughs> I can't stand up. You all right? Oh, God, that, that was horrendous. <laughs> that was really... Um... I don't think I'll do that again, no. It's the end of the first six months of what has been a demanding year so far for EasyJet. By the end of June, the airline flew its 10 millionth passenger. In the last six months alone, it carried 3 million people over 12 million miles to 15 destinations. And despite some appalling weather, only one in 10 flights have been delayed an hour or more. For most people, it's been a happy experience. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. She's great. Oh, one is snob too. <laughs> right. One is something else. Next. We're off on holidays. Oh, 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 oh,